mess that up. Okay. So. Hello, everyone. My name is Heath Erno. I'm your favorite conductor as, as of this year. Um, I will be conducting. Uh, ben will be doing what's been done. The music chair is by Eliza. Jet will praise God. The doctrinal master be. Oh, wow, I can't, I can't speak. The doctrinal mastery is by Charles. The personal share is by Eliza. The seeker. I am the seeker, or we are the seeker. We're the seeker. The preacher is Brother Jones. The teacher is the spirit of truth. And Adam will call upon the Lord. Okay, so journal question. It's what did I learn on vacation about me? And what must be done? And doing what must be done. What did I learn about doing what must be done alongside with knowing about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have any. Do we write down? Do we not have announcements yet. Do we have announcements? Finals. Anyone? Finals. Yeah. This week. Weeks. This week, but soon. Yeah. You're already stressing about them. Yeah. Man. Okay, I'm not gonna write finals on here two weeks out. I'm just gonna sit there and be like haunting everybody. <laughs> what else is going on this week? There's the fire title thing. Yeah. That's the Hank Smith. What else? That's Sunday. Do we know what time? I assume probably like 7. Yeah. We'll update it once we know. We sure it's 7? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. What else? Events? Sporting events? Or music events? I think there's a, um, like an all jazz concert thing. Next Monday, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it Yeah, but I don't know what day it is. It's all day Monday, but next Monday, next Monday. Okay, when we find out, we'll put it on there for sure. I think there's wrestling this week on a Wednesday, right? Early? Anything else? Okay. Alrighty then, so now it's time for the. Music or was that the music chair at the beginning? No, we will do the music chair now. We'll do the music chair. <laughs> Thank you, Heath. Welcome. On the spot, didn't get much notice, so I appreciate that very much. Eliza. Um, I have a question for you. Can you play hymn number 30 or not? Thanks. Let's find out what it is. Is it Come Come Easy Saints? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can attempt that. Okay. Shall I just play? And if everyone wants to follow along, they can follow Alright, is this about the music or the words or both? Um, both. Is there a message from the words you're wanting to draw out? Yeah. How about if you just read the words okay. while I play softly? Or something. Or, okay. or not. <laughs> Thank you. 
1338 but behold your days of probation are past you have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlasting too late yeah and your destruction is made sure yea for ye have sought all the days of your lives for that which ye could not attain and ye have sought for happiness in doing iniquity which thing is contrary to the nature of that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head um it's pretty uh pretty intense stuff um, it's scary. Yeah. Um, I uh, I have problems with procrastinating. Bad problems with procrastinating. Um, and I don't know stuff like this and sometimes events in your life, your life, will uh, it makes you realize that. There will there will be an end, or not an end necessarily, but there there will be a point when it is too late. You can't wait any longer. You either have to get up and go and start doing what you have to, or you are going to get plowed down. And I don't ever want to be at a point when my destruction is made sure. Um, because I sought all the days of my life for that which I could not obtain. Um, and in reading that, it makes me realize, or makes me at least ponder, what are those things that I'm reaching for that I can't obtain? What am I going for that's not bringing true happiness? How have I sought happiness in doing iniquity? scriptures like this, uh, sometimes it's interesting to uh, read it like it's talking to you, because obviously they're talking to someone else, but like, behold your days, or you could say, behold, my days of probation are past. I have procrastinated the day of my salvation until it is everlasting too, everlastingly too late. My destruction is made sure, yea, for I have sought all the days of my life for that which I could not obtain, and I have sought for happiness in doing iniquity which thing is contrary to the na nature of that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head. I don't ever want to get to a point where I I can admit that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. That is not a good thing. Um, so be careful. Um, reach out if you need help because we're all struggling as well. I'm struggling as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so reach out. There are resources to help you. Um, and yeah, say something we pray to Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Um, just I want to give a second witness that 
You know, it's easy to think that other people are doing better than you are. That somehow, like, people have got it worked out or whatever, and I'm the one struggling. I'm the one with these problems. I'm the one with these temptations or whatever. And, you know, it's pretty much kind of universal, the human experience, the human condition. So, you know, it's we got to look at each one, each other and ourselves as a work in progress and kind of broken and bent in some ways and all in need of a little straightening out and helping out, sure. Um, something about that scripture, I think we'll talk about it tomorrow more than today, but like <clears throat> when you read scriptures like that, what image do you get of God? Your, your destruction is like, it's everlastingly too late, and now your destruction is secure, and, you know, like, fire and brimstone, and, like, you just didn't pass the test. You failed, and now I've given you so many chances, and now you're out. That's it for you. You're done. Can't do it anymore, God says. I've tried hard enough, and... You didn't make it. Is that kind of the message you get from scriptures like that? I certainly did, and sometimes it's do. So how do we reconcile that with a loving God who's full of charity, patience, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, love unfeigned, kindness? How do you reconcile those two images of God? They seem opposite to me. He's giving you like a forewarning, so this is this is gonna happen in the future. So put yourself in order now because the time will come. Okay, there you go. That's love, isn't it? Preparing you for what is to come. Hmm. Good. Welcome to class, by the way. Paige Sperry. Like, who's this new person? So there was a change of years class schedules, right? So you and your brother, Michael, will be here. Michael's in Portland, but I'm still trying to get Oh, yeah. okay. Then yeah. he'll join us tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Um, so welcome. We'll be losing a few of you when the semester changes, but Paige and Michael will join us now with the new year. So glad you're here. Any other thoughts about that quickly? Yes? I think also just keep in mind that they were in your So for him to let the only thing known of him be that he just majorly messed up in life and spend hours writing that, just imagine how humbling that is, you know? That's not just like, hey Siri, click on Google Docs, you know, I messed up. That's like hours and hours and hours of you scribing this into these bullet plates just saying that you messed up. Hmm. That's a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's think about that. Let's get the right image of God in our minds. And... Let's be willing to admit when we need help. And yeah, procrastination. Why is why does that happen? Why is that such a big issue for most people? Putting off doing what must be done. Maybe we'll get to that in a second. Thanks, Charles. Eliza, over to you again. Um. So we sang this song yesterday in sacrament meeting, and I really like the second verse when it says. Why should we mourn or think our lot is hard? Tis not so, all is right. Why should we think uh, to earn a great reward if we now shun the fight? Um, and that kind of like, boom, like you're gonna be okay. Hmm. You know, all is right, and yeah, it might be hard, but just get through it. Because once when you get through it, or while you're getting through it, you'll be fine. Hmm. I might not feel fine, but you're fine mm -hmm. at the same time. It's kind of confusing, but. Um, and then, while well, I was thinking about what to share today, um, you know, Christmas came to mind, because, you know, it's high Christmas, and the whole gifts um, also came. And one of my biggest things with gifts is I don't like when someone gives me something um, at times because I feel guilty, and I'm like, what do I do with this now? 
Um, so you I mean like, like an ugly Christmas sweater you don't want to wear, and what do you do with it now? Or? No, it's like, like if I don't have a use for it, like what do I do with it? Or like, oh, I have to put this to good use because I don't want to waste this gift because, you know, it's meant something for them to give it to me, so I don't want to waste it. Um, you know, that's the same thing with all the gifts that God has given us is they've given it to us for us to use, not to just put it, keep it in the box but it's for us to open it and apply it to our lives. Um, and when I was thinking about this, DNC 8833 came to mind when it says, For what doth it profit a man if a gift is bestowed unto him, and he received not the gift? Behold, he rejoices not in that which is given unto him, neither rejoices in him who is the giver of the gift. So it's not just the gift that's the great thing, but it's the, also the giver of the gift, that they um, thought of you, to give you the gift and if you just leave it in the box it's not really saying much. Thank you. I wonder what gifts gifts we've been given that we may take for granted or maybe don't use to the most capacity that we could. Hmm. So we have two rows, because we have 21 in our class now, if everybody is here. And I think that's a little bit too many to put into the one circle. You know, we've been doing 19. So um, we'll see how things shake out at the end of the semester. But um, for now, this is how it will be. Um, Okay, we are supposed to, so it's the new, it's the new come follow me schedule, right? Yesterday you guys started learning in Sunday school about um, Moses and Abraham. So we're getting into Old Testament now. We're supposed to be done with Doctrine and Covenants and church history and moving on to, to uh, a new book of scripture, new books of scripture. Um, and I'm not quite ready to move on yet. There's still a few things that I wanted to cover, that like big things that we didn't quite get to in the Doctrine and Covenants. So we'll get there to the New Testament or Old Testament and the, and the Pearl of Great Price. Um, as far as your reading goes, if you're still trying to finish the Doctrine and Covenants, then I would say like wrap that up so that you've completed reading a book of the whole book of scripture, if that's something that you're trying to do. Um, otherwise, start on the Pearl of Great Price, Moses and Abraham. Read that in your daily reading, and then move into, oh man, do I even want to ask you to read the Old Testament cover to cover? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It is. It's, it's, yeah. There's a lot in there that's not very relevant. And there's a lot in there that's really good, too. So in one year, can you get through the entire Old Testament? I'd have to do the math, how many pages you'd have to read. It took me two years to get through the Old Testament in my daily reading as, in a, as like after my mission. That's a lot. That's a long time. <laughs> so maybe I'll figure that out. And if you want to, like, does anybody intend to read the entire Old Testament this year that we're in the Old Testament? Is that like a goal you would have? You'll be on your mission by the time, you know. Did you say read the Old Testament on the mission? No. You probably mission? wouldn't. Off-limits. You could, yes. You certainly could. It's not off limits. You said off limits. Oh, it's like what? <laughs> it's not off limits. <laughs> yeah, but. It'll be back. Does anybody have that goal? I mean, I could go to the trouble of putting together a reading chart, but if nobody's going to try to read the whole thing. Probably segments. What about following the Come Follow Me schedule and just reading the stuff that's in there so you're getting like the best of the Old Testament, kind of, and not the stuff that is, you know, written for people that lived a long time ago. That We no longer live the Law of Moses, right? So there's a lot in there about the Law of Moses that we don't really even read anymore. Don't need. Okay. <coughs> Questions about reading? So still, some of you haven't taken the test, and pretty much almost everybody still needs to update their reading as as of current. Um, And that, the the grading of the semester actually ends when the school semester ends. So we've got a a couple more weeks 
for you to catch up and update your reading. So if we're in a procrastination, you still have a little time, but it's better to just do it every day if you can. And if you want to take a picture of your reading, then send it to me. I can update it for you. Speaking of reading, can you open up your reading chart if you haven't already this morning and actually update your reading for the, for the vacation? And while you're doing that, it's a chance to reflect on this question. What did I learn? So Paige, what are we doing here every, every day when you come in, there will be a question on the board. And that's meant for you to answer in that study journal. Um, yeah. So just write down the date, maybe write down the question and write down your answer to it. <clears throat> so what did I learn on vacation about me and doing what must be done? So I'm speaking of doing what must be done. Ben? Yeah. Let's do what must be done up here. Let's talk about how this went. We were just on vacation, right? We weren't in here to do what must be done in this class. So there are pennies that are not here that could be here that aren't. How are we doing with each of our plants, Ben? Let's talk about them. Oh, they're looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good? Would you say this is looking pretty good? No. Here, let's, here, let's see how it's doing. Is it, is it, is it dead yet? Squish one of the leaves. It's crispy. Yeah, pretty good. It's pretty, that leaf is trying really hard to die. It was not dead already. It's a little green left, there, but I don't know if there's a lot of life. It's just the residual green left. So my question is, is anybody's seed of testimony or faith that has been nurtured over the vacation, did you end up looking a little bit like this? How did you do with your spiritual nourishment when there wasn't the daily routine of seminary and school going on to keep you? You are really doing a good job on that one, Ben. Yeah, that one was thirsty. What are you going to do about this one? Give it some water. You're just going to spritz it a little bit. Get the top of the Top of the, the dirt wet? Yep. It might need a little bit more to get down to the roots. Here we go. Here, let me hold it up. Let's put it on the wood. There we go. Yes. Anybody think this can come back? No. From this point? <laughs> I mean, some of you guys have been watering this plant. <laughs> and it's definitely not coming back. This one's a goner. But this one, there may be a chance. I don't know. I don't know. Let's try it, okay? So maybe we've procrastinated the nourishment of the seed long enough that it's everlastingly too late, Charles, and its, it's, it's fate is now set. It's now maybe dead, maybe not. Maybe there's still a chance here. How are Bryson's bonsai tree seeds doing? Doing okay. How did you, how do you, you we need more water. This is only the surface. We've got to pour some more water in there too. Oh. Get down to some more of the roots. You did? Yeah. Okay, great. Question? What? This cup, like the layers of the cup, keep increasing. Keep it what? Increasing. Oh, we yeah, got we do. Okay, cool. How about this? Did you add more water here? Yeah. You know something I noticed about this one? You know how for the longest time this avocado seed has not been doing anything? Mm -hmm. Well, initially, I put it in upside down. So it wasn't going to grow. Like, roots don't grow up, do they? No. Most of the time? Are there any plants that roots grow up? Maybe this one. Maybe this weird thing. But this one, the root grows down. I had it in upside down, so nothing was happening. And there was a, the, the, the seed covering. Thank you, Ben. Great job. Good job. The seed had this sort of shell over it that was keeping the seed from actually getting the nourishment. Normally, soil, I think, would break down that outer covering, and it would start to get nourishment to the actual seed that would grow. But it was still on there, and there's no soil to break it down, so it was just staying there. But now look what's happened. 
Okay. It's actually starting to put down a taproot. This? No way? Like, can you believe it? So, whose seed is like this avocado pit? It's like, it took, it's, it took a long time to show any progress at all. It looked like it was not going to happen. Right? I didn't have a lot of confidence that this was going to grow because we went months without seeing anything happening here. And then finally, with persistence in nourishing this seed properly, making adjustments along the way, now, look at that. It's starting to grow. However, when we came in here, there was no water to the seed. It was, it was below. So... Maybe it started to grow, and now after all that work, we didn't nourish the seed properly. Maybe, maybe it's not going to keep growing. Well, maybe it grew the root because it was forced to. What do you mean? Because the water got so low that it was like, oh shoot, I need the water. It's not just going to come back up. So then it, I don't know, maybe it just crumbled after it grew. Maybe, yeah, because of the drought, it had to work harder to try to find it. It's kind of like how. Uh huh. And then, like in the middle of a field, like it's not like that because there's so much everywhere. Mm hmm. And maybe it's like all of the trees around here where there's so much rain that their roots don't go very deep because it's really easy to get water. So then, whenever there's a storm, the trees all just want to like lay over and die because they can't put up with the, the resistance, with the wind and the weight of the snow and stuff. So you're right. Maybe there's something to periods of drought in life. Obviously, this is all metaphorical, right? You get what we're trying to do here? So how did you do over the break? This one's turning a little bit brown on the edges. It wasn't like that before, right? So the time of not being nourished properly has started to cause some wilting on some of you. This is your favorite plant. How's this one doing? Huh? I don't know. What is it? Don't know? Oh. You want to put the plant? Can you put the plant? You're so mean. <laughs> you might be onto something there, Paige. Okay, so turn, let's see. I want to hear your comments about how things went over the break with being out of routine versus being in a routine. Um, what did you learn about, were you able to keep your routine going for spiritual nourishment, which includes praying on a regular basis personally, which includes reading scripture, gathering with the saints, activities and stuff. How did it go? What did you learn? comments, some observations about yourself. Taylor. I learned that... Watch your laptop. I learned that when um, I'm at home like that and I don't have uh, deadlines at school or um, places that I have to be all the time, um, I tend to be a little less efficient with my time. So I found that, well, usually when I do my homework, I do it in my bed, which is just more comfortable. What? Um, and then, <laughs> you guys do homework in bed? Yes. Yes? Wow. So, um, but I also, like, when I have some free time, half the time I'll go and, like, relax in my bed or watch a YouTube video in my bed. And so I found that over the break, two times mushed together and it turned into less of doing homework and more of, oh, I'm in my bed. I can watch YouTube and mm -hmm. do whatever else. Hmm. Um, so I was not near as efficient as I could have been. Okay. Um, that can be interesting, like kind of confusing because is the bed a place for learning and productivity and turning your brain on and being, you know, engaged academically, intellectually? Is the bed a place for that or is the bed a place for lounging and sleeping and you know, wasting time on YouTube. Like, what is the bed a place for doing? Yeah. 
more, you know. So the environment can impact you in a way, right? Oh, I'm in my bed, I'm uncomfortable, this is a place of lounging, and therefore I'm going to do the thing that's done in the bed. <laughs> yeah, so I found that um, if I want to be more efficient with my time and more or like focused on doing homework, but not only just homework, but studying scripture, if I want to be more focused on reading talks, listening to talks, going and chilling in my bed is not the best place to be. Hmm. I need another space that's my own, that's my focus space. Hmm. Okay, great observation. Thank you for sharing that. What other observations? Because maybe it could go either way. If there's a lot of pressure during school time, your schedule's packed, you've got deadlines, you've got all this stuff to do, and then it may squish out like the time for spiritual nourishment. That could go that way. So when you now don't have all the schedule and the routine and the pressure, maybe there's more time to do what must be done in terms of nourishing your, your um, spirituality, right? But maybe it could go the other way too. Like, oh, I'm out of routine. Now there aren't deadlines. So now the whole thing is just sort of like blown out of the water. Coming at you, Amina. And it was really nice because it just like reminded me how important it is to spend time with your family and be close to them because like being at school is great and everything. Like being with your friends is one of my favorite things. But it's also really important to um, make sure you have family time. And that's just something I realized because you know, like the Christmas season and I'm getting closer to the new year, it's you know, it kind of like drew me closer to my family. And then it's just like a, it's obviously it's like a special time. So, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of realized that. So how did that nourish you then, having less time with, at, away from home and more, you know, friends, so friends, school, other stuff outside the home and then being home. How, how was that good for you? Well, because, um, I don't know, my parents are great examples to me, like spiritually. And so being just around them and what they have taught me and my family and my children. It's just, it's good to be around good things. And like with friends, it's great too because you can have really good friends, but um, I feel like it's more like a spiritual interaction. Hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. I think it's meant to be that way too. There's a little more weight to the relationship of family than friends. In, in some families, hopefully in most families, there's a different difference there. Cool. Thank you. Any other observations about yourself and um, what you learn from being in routine, out of routine, having a different, having more time on your hands, perhaps, and your spiritual nourishment? Anything else to add to the discussion? All right. How about your New Year's resolutions? Does it include anything to do with your spirituality? What's that? Didn't make one? Not even one? On the New Year's? Because like the only day you can make a resolution is on New Year's Day. Right? Oh, it's way too bad. <laughs> it's otherwise, it's, it's everlastingly too late to make changes. The time has come and went. No more resolutions, no more goals to be set. That's it. It's, it's over. Does anybody include... First of all, raise your hand if you made some kind of resolution. Some kind of like, okay, this is the new year. I'm going to do this all year long. I'm going to like make this effort. Some people, okay, who didn't? Who doesn't believe in New Year's resolutions? Who doesn't do resolutions? Like, kind of in, kind of out. All right. So, um, I want to encourage you this year, however you did in the past, I want every day for you to read, to be in some kind of spiritually uplifting written word. Okay, if that's the ensign, you can get magazines anymore, the scriptures. Pick a scripture, any scripture, right? They'll all be good. But for all of great price is what we're doing now. It's an Old Testament. I really want to encourage you every day 
every single day to set aside some time, whatever time that is. Could be five minutes. Could be 50 minutes. But set a time every day to do it. And I want you to pray every day. In fact, I don't think there's anything more if I could encourage you to do one thing would be more important than to pray. Personal prayers. Because that's where the relationship is built with God. So, please consider that. If you haven't already, I promise you that you will be blessed for it. The roots will go down deeper. The leaves will be greener. Um, and you will bear more fruit. So, please consider the value of daily scripture study and daily personal prayer. Okay? And know that the Spirit will remind you of that too. You could be going throughout your day and be like, oh man, I didn't do that yet. Or you could be laying down on your pillow in the place where the sleeping happens. And, and you'll remember, oh, I didn't say my prayers. You have a decision to make. Oh, I didn't read today. You have a decision to make whether you're going to do it or not do it. Because the Spirit, I know, will remind you. Because God wants you to do this. He's inviting you into His Word. So, pay attention when you get those little reminders. And actually follow them. And actually do it. And you'll be blessed for it. Um, okay. Hopefully, you figured out something about yourself. Let's get back into it. Into the, the routine here. Okay, we've got like uh, just a couple minutes. Basket questions. Paige, anytime you have an anonymous, you can ask questions in class anytime and you're encouraged to give your comments and questions. But you can also ask anonymous questions by getting a paper and putting it in the basket and we'll answer it at some point. Okay. So here's this How can I not feel awkward around people who went inactive? How can I not feel awkward around people who went inactive? So there's an assumption there that being around somebody who has now not is not going to church somehow creates an awkwardness, at least for the person asking this question. Has anybody else wondered or questioned that? Experienced? I have certainly have family members who we were all raised active in the church, and now most of us are not. So when we get together, there's like, oh, okay, there are some things we can talk about, some things we don't talk about, because my people are getting offended and stuff. So I get that there can be awkwardness. It can be Limiting in how you converse with one another. What advice do you have this person? How can it not be awkward? I think I saw Iola, then Paige, and then we'll get other comments. Go. Well, I personally think that it will always be awkward. It will always be? Well, there is a way to get past it, but it's most definitely going to be awkward. Huh. Because you're on two different sides of something. Okay. Uh, well, there could be opposition to the church, where people think you're wrong now, right? So that, but then also it could be just like, eh, I just don't go to church anymore. It's not like I have a gripe with you. But um, the most important thing is to continue to love them because they are a child of God, and just because huh. you don't agree with something or they're not active anymore doesn't mean that you. Okay, very good. Paige. So Ethan's really uncomfortable sometimes on, in family reunions because after one of our relatives died, their kids, except for one of their kids, fell away. Hmm. And so it's just kind of awkward, but I kind of just feel that people tell me that, uh, like, especially we have like a light kind of about us. And so for me, I just kind of. Like, I don't say anything about why I don't like that they are, even if they make comments about it, mm -hmm. I just kind of ignore it, and then, like, just, even if it's awkward, I act kind, and, like, I, I think Jesus Christ would um, react to all that, mm -hmm. and then it becomes less, it has become less awkward because they, one of them came back, because they okay. started getting back to the flow a bit after one of our reunions. Hmm. So. I want to highlight that too. People change every day. People change every day. And so you don't know what can happen in somebody's life, right? They may just be going through a phase. 
may not, but you never know. So you don't ever want to do anything that would sort of cause you embarrassment or don't say something right, right love people into into activity again. Yeah, Jacob. I was just going to say, like, depending on the situation, it's only, like, it's not like, they're not, I don't know, it's only, like, awkward if you make it awkward. Okay. That's what I think. Does it need to be awkward? No. Not necessarily. Also, um, even, even if you don't have going to church a thing that's in common, um, you can still, you can still love them, and you can find other things that you have in common. Hmm. That can maybe help take off the edge of feeling awkward around someone who has fallen away from the church. Hmm. So, like, we can be, we can believe in completely different things. We can um, believe in different religions and things like that. But we, there's still other things we can have in common, like hobbies or other things that we can talk about to the other people and. Um, like Excellent. So don't define somebody primarily by whether they're active in church or not. There's a, there are better ways to define the human being than that distinction, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're out of time. I like your comments. Thank you for sharing those. I, I agree with you. Keep loving people no matter what. It doesn't have to be awkward believe that people can change and that you can be part of that change in somebody's life by being a good example. Leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Adam. Your tag over here. Your name part thing. Uh, there's just a pile over there, oh. and then you can put that in your cubby. Uh, is there a cubby already over there? I did. Well, put it, put it, put it just in the in the bottom. Uh, in the bottom. I got you twice. Yeah, I grabbed it. Yeah. So put it in the bottom. It's an open space. Big old theater. Canceled. Yeah, the senior got canceled. Your Twitter account got canceled. What's the name? Two.